Hello everyone, this is Farid Fremani and welcome to Think Tanks. So this concept is taken from the book, The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari, and I'm sure many of you have heard about this, but it's a very strong concept that I'm trying to combine from Simon Sinek's theory, who is one of the very strong career coaches. He has trained people from Fortune 100 companies, all these big companies, Apple, Microsoft, they ask him to train their staff for the psychological and interpersonal skills development. And on the other side, this book, Monk Who Sold His Ferrari, the concept is kind of merged together into one. What he says is the guy who was a monk, who was a very successful criminal lawyer, got to the heights, uh, was able to afford the mansion, Ferrari, all the luxuries in the world. And all at a sudden, at the age of 40, he got diagnosed with it chest pain, he got hospitalized, and from there, that point in life, his life got changed, right? So now what he's trying to teach is at that point in time, he took a lot of psychological counseling and he was unhappy, depressed. So now the question is, who is the candidate for depression? Is it somebody who does not have a job, does not have the money, does not have a stable business, or somebody who, despite of having everything, is also depressed? So this means that depression is not related to economic health. This is related to something else, right? And where he landed up selling all his Ferrari is mentioned and getting into the Indian village where he tried learning from Monk with a promise that he will try to come back and spread his knowledge. The story that changed his life, let me tell you that story. So the story he was taught by Monk was that there was a big samurai wrestler. You know how samurai wrestler looks like, like big six feet, big giant, 300 pound. And he was wearing his little underwear. And then he came out with his discipline because he used to maintain his body weight. So they used to do practice. And then he came out from his house and then he saw his rose flower garden. And he was actually enjoying the breeze and smell of the rose flower. But then suddenly he saw on the left side there was a lane going which was the not a very beautiful lane but this lane had a lot of diamonds into it so he left the flower on the side and he started walking into that diamond lane and then the story ends he was never able to get back so the concept that the monk is trying to teach is very important i think we all need to learn in this especially with all these uncertainties happening in life is this garden is our mind. So if you put false seeds, bitter seeds, the result is a bitter flower, the flower which does not look good, the flower which does not smell good, right? Or if we try to do good seeds, we try to put good seeds, this sir means good karma, you know, good things for the others, but regardless of being or being selfless. The flower is good fragrance, you know, it's, it's, it's a positive flower. It looks good. It smells good. And then we can enjoy that. So the first concept was whatever you put inside the pot, you receive that back in your life. Okay. Sometimes it's from the direct person. Sometimes it could be from direct from the universe. So maybe somebody else would try to take care of you, try to do good for others. That's concept number one. Concept number two is, uh, Many times in life, the depression starts when you leave your rose flower for the path of diamond, which does not attract you. But despite of that, you start running in the race. And at one point in time, you feel that you have collected a lot of diamonds, but that happiness is not there anymore. Right. So and that's why wise men said that. If you want to stay happy, look at the person who is below you. There will always be a person who is understretched, less blessed, less fortunate than you. And then there will be always a person who has bigger car, better house, bigger business, better pay, better looking, ha happy looking family than you. And looking at those kinds of people, you always feel, oh, I'm so under blessed. I'm so unfortunate, right? And you start becoming unhappy. So you lose your rose garden for that diamond path, which does not make sense to you. But rather than if you look at somebody who's underserved, underblessed, there are so many people out there, you will appreciate your rose and God will grant you with more blessings. So I think this lesson from Simon Sinek and Monk who sold his Ferrari would help you. Faith Ramani signing off, stay blessed.